Yo, what's going on guys? So one of my most commonly asked questions since the awakening system came into the game is do I awaken before I refine? And what is my upgrade path as a free to play, as an open fielder, as a rallier garrison? So today we're gonna get into the exact steps. And when I mean exact, I mean the exact step down to the piece of gear as to which equipment piece you should upgrade and win so should you awaken first should you refine first and what is the best thing to do for your account so without stalling too much let's hop into it all right so before we get started just a real quick recap about what the difference between refining and awakening is in rise of kingdoms so refining in this game is when you take a piece that you did not crit on first craft and you basically can spend blueprints and materials in order to get this bar up to 100 uh, as close as you can um, obviously you've got a certain percentages of how lucky you are or how likely you are um, to get a 100% refinement level which means that your piece would not be crit but just a reminder if you get refinement like plus 75 then you would actually receive no bonus stats you would just uh, receive nothing and then you would have a guaranteed crit on your next refine so that being said the awakening system is much different it is a non-rng system that lilith implemented into the game after armaments so i guess they got enough backlash from that but it is basically where you do a same concept where you spend a material uh amount and then you combine that with a blueprint of the piece that you are trying to awaken to get stats which you can see here on the right side now those stats vary from piece to piece so the weapon for example gives enemy health ignored some unit capacity and damage overall and then it's got these fun special bonuses here at the bottom these i'll go over a little bit later but i just want to let you know that these are actually not that impactful um at least the level five skills for now for now we're just we'll get into it um and then you know the helmet has different things the uh gloves are centered around march speed reduction and unit capacity the boots are centered around march speed a ton of march speed and the uh, legs are centered around more damage to troops and unit capacity as well as I believe a little bit of um, skill or damage reduction so that being said let's get into what the upgrade path should look like for all your gear saying you're starting out at, at zero gear uh, for what you should be prioritizing on your marches at a as a low spender free to play open field centered account all right, so your first priority, and this is yes, before refining and before awakening every single gear is to make sure that you're using all of your Iconic Crystals. So for example, if you have pieces that are not Iconicized, if that's a word, um, you basically, it is your number one priority to put an Iconic Crystal in there. Obviously, I don't have any Iconic Crystals because I am trying to prioritize this as much as I possibly can. Um, and the first thing that I'll do when I get them is go put this on gear. A situation that you don't want to be in, and I know that a lot of you guys might find yourself in the situation, is when you have extra Iconic Crystals and not enough Legendary gear. Um, you're too set on refining or you're too set on getting one complete archer, cavalry, or infantry set and you're not actually crafting enough legendary gear. Well, if you're an open field player, um, you want to craft as many as many legendary pieces as you have iconic crystals. Um, now, granted, a lot of you might be free to play and I completely understand. So you should aim for maybe three or four gear sets. Um, but I would even argue that even if you're free to play, three is a good number to aim for to start but you should eventually i mean by you know hopefully you've been playing the game for a few years um get to maybe four or five marches uh, with decent levels of gear and enough iconic crystals to put on them so that being said again number one priority is to put your iconic crystals on legendary gear now for example a lot of you might think that this purple piece korok's humility is really good and don't get me wrong it is absolutely fantastic but if i had all my gear iconicized right so full iconic full iconic full iconic etc i'm not going to go down all of it actually i guess i will full iconic and then this was full iconic and i had an iconic crystal left over my number one priority to strengthen or to most strengthen my open field march would actually be to disenchant my uh korok's humility or dismantle it and then craft the eternal knight and put an iconic crystal on there because that would be the biggest upgrade to my murder ball um, instead of refining a piece or anything so i just want to stress that level of importance before we go into the nitty-gritty minute details 
All right, so using my archer gear set here as kind of a guide because it, it is all iconic one. So this means that you now have an iconic one set for all of your main marches. And now you are working on refining and or using um, the iconic system to upgrade your iconic levels. So the second priority is getting all of your equipment pieces. Yes, all of them to iconic level two. All right, so not very hard. And once they're Iconic 1, then they go to Iconic 2. Okay, so pretty simple. It's pretty cheap for the cost, and you get like 1.5 to 1% health, uh, defense or attack on all of your little pieces here, and it's just, it's just good. It's just good stuff. So you want to do that for very cheap. It's a small incremental upgrade. The next thing actually is something that might be a bit controversial, but I think it is without a doubt the best way to go and that is to get your boots to iconic level five especially especially for your archers and your infantry a lot of people don't understand but when you're maneuvering around a murder ball and managing a murder ball the evenness of the march speed of your commanders really really affects the trades and your mobility uh, with your murder ball as a whole right uh, you ever hear the term you're only as strong as your weakest link well think about that as you're only as fast as your weakest uh or your slowest march because when what happens is you'll have your calves flying around and then your poor zuge leong with ysg is getting absolutely slaughtered in the back while you're trying to move away or reposition and you just get terrible trades right so you want to get your boots to iconic level five as fast as possible i think that march speed is perfect it's exactly what you need for the archers to start catching up with your cavalry the next thing that you're going to do after you get your boots to iconic level five is you're going to get your weapon to iconic level four and this is where you get a very very massive damage to troops on the map increase again this is for field players so the damage on the map is huge okay after you get your bow or your hammer or whatever your weapon is to level four you're going to get your legs to level four your helmet to level four and then your gloves to level four yes so your legs helmet and then gloves to level four and your chest to iconic level three and why do i say iconic level three for the chest because this is an open field guide this is essentially damage to rallied army and garrisons and for most people you're not going to be swarming down garrisons and or rallies okay and then as an optional, you can put your accessories for Iconic Level 3 uh, for the unit cap. You will actually get a decent chunk of unit capacity and health, but this is optional as most accessories are really reliant on the KVK um, currency and sometimes those take a long time to get, right? So after you have all of those things already done, now you're going to start refining your gear, okay? Now you're just all the way top to bottom left to right whichever way you do it whichever way you are able to get the blueprints you're going to go through all of your gear sets and start refining it okay so that's going to take a while it's going to take a long long time you're going to do that for all three of your marches it's going to be exhausting so by this time a new gear set and a new gear system has probably already been released but that being said we're still going to keep going down the list of priorities so once that is all crit and you're all done with that and all your gears are fine, you're then going to upgrade your weapon to iconic level five, your helmet to iconic level five, your legs to iconic level five, and then your chest, right? And then your gloves because it is just a march speed reduction. And lastly, again, your accessories to iconic level five. Now, most people in this game will not even get one set of iconic level five so the only way this will happen is um if basically this system is the only gear system in the game for a long 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 time to come so don't worry about it uh and with the way that this is going i mean look if you're getting four or five sets to iconic level five and fully crit i mean you're spending hundreds and hundreds of thousand dollars on this game but anyway that is the upgrade path and again it should be on the screen if i've done my editing correctly just to lay out the exact upgrade path for you and again remember this is for open field and this is specifically um the upgrade path that you should do for each of your marches individually if you are aiming to have a even spread of strength across all of your marches 
again, I know that some people like to invest into one march more than others. And if you are invested in the cavalry or garrison, archer, garrison, uh, infantry garrison or rally, then we're going to go over that now. And so why don't we hop right over to if you're focusing on one march and you are a rally or garrison, what should you be investing in? And one quick thing, I know I just said that we're going to get into the other thing, but a quick disclaimer is that no, like, pieces like the Korox Humility are not bad, or pieces like the Blue Shield for your weapon are not bad. I would strongly suggest keeping those around in your lineups for your gear, because I imagine many of you guys, myself included, have a lot of those pieces still. The only time that you should replace those pieces, again, is when you have those excess Iconic Crystals, okay? So, no, those pieces aren't bad. You can still use them. Keep them around for value. They're fantastic. But once you start piling up Iconic Crystals, it's time to start crafting some new gear. Okay, I just want to just want to lay that out there real quick before we get into the rally garrisons. All right, and here we are, the rally and garrison portion of the video. Now, this is going to change based on the kind of troop type that you are maining and whether it's a rally or garrison because some of these iconic benefits only work in some situations. So, for example, your boots give a small tiny bit of defense while you're outside of a lion's territory. Well, this does nothing if you're in a garrison, so you never need to get these boots to level 5. Now, if you're only garrisoning. And same thing goes for the infantry helmet. If you are using a infantry garrison, for example, and you're using Gorgo with Constantine, well, you do absolutely no skill damage. So you will actually never need to get your helmet to iconic level five either. So just a few notes before we get started, but essentially the upgrade path from the open field list to the rallying garrison list is exactly the same if you're starting from zero. So you are going to craft all your legendary gear with iconic level one and then iconic level two, right? Period, end of story. That is your first upgrade path. Once you have everything at iconic level two, you are going to ignore <laughs> i know ignore the gloves and the boots from that point on this is because they don't do anything for you but provide you with unit cap and a march speed reduction which does absolutely nothing in the garrison and this only gives you at most 1.5 percent uh defense if you are rallying specifically so you're going to ignore these two until much much later and the gloves in fact you're just going to ignore uh altogether so once you have everything at Iconic Level 2, you are going to get the weapon, and this is in order, weapon, legs, helmet, chest, and then accessories to Iconic Level 4, okay? Accessories to Iconic Level 4 is a very, very big deal. It's 2% all damage or 4% all damage if you have both and um, some more troop health while you are at it. Once you have all those pieces at Iconic Level 4, you are then going to start critting all of your pieces. So start that refined game, get those blueprints, and uh, have fun, because that's going to take you a while. I hope you're lucky, because I <laughs> certainly was not. All right. Anyway, once you have crit all your pieces, and it looks something like what you see on my screen in front of you, um, except my ring and my horn aren't crit. Oh, I'm about to craft my fifth ring, bro. It's going to crit 100%. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it actually will crit 100%, but God, it is painful. Anyway, sorry, I'm getting off track. Once you have everything uh, fully crit and you have everything at Iconic Level 4 that you need, you are then going to get everything to, this is a shocker, Iconic Level 5. Yes, wow. Except for the um, head or the helmet for infantry garrisons and the gloves for all rallying garrison leaders because that is just absolutely useless and then at this point as the final little like little cherry on top you can go ahead and get your boots to level five just for that 1.5 percent extra defense while you are outside of territory and at that point you are finished start working on your next set and um at that point you probably have either graduated college if you're not in there already you have probably retired if you haven't already or um well, we're not going to go past that. So <laughs> anyway, it takes it takes a lot. And real quick, just to wrap this video up, I wanted to explain my reasoning as to why I was opting for the upgrade path that I was describing in this video. So it shouldn't be any surprise that the reason why I was suggesting these things is because there is a material 2% upgrade ratio that this game follows. And the way that I was describing it basically gets you the most efficient 
upgrade for your material cost. Um, and why do I not love the Iconic Tier 5? And why would I rather crit an item before you get to Iconic Tier 5? Well, we're going to use actually the Hammer of Sun and Moon as an example. So above, I will flash on the screen basically the math that shows you exactly how much damage the Furious Strike is adding to your Rally and or Garrison. It looks really fancy, but the math only comes out to 1.13% all damage when crit. Guys, that, I mean, that is nothing. So what would I rather have? 7.5% attack or 1.13% all damage or even less because it wouldn't be crit by the time I got to Iconic 5 anyway. I mean, the, the answer is pretty obvious. I'm not saying 1.13% all damage isn't anything. Uh, in fact, in the highest of high Imperiums, right, that 1.3 or 1.13% all damage could be the difference maker. But the truth is, is that if you have to have a choice between critting and Iconic 5, it's really just not even close. And that's the same that goes for the helmet, the uh, chest, the legs, not here, but the legs are the same. The bonuses that these give are just not worth the extra sats that critting an item would have. Alright, so that wraps up the video. I really do hope you guys learned something. This did take me a little while and a lot of theory crafting and a lot of math in order for me to arrive at these conclusions. And I understand that it might not be 100% to the math bone accurate. You know, sometimes troop capacity and the amount of damage that that increases uh, on your march is varied, right? Um, based on troop type and skill damage and all that stuff. So when you're getting into the nitty gritty of things, you know, does this... Um, iconic level three by increasing your troop capacity by 500 really warrant the um, non-crit Ash of the Dawn so that you get to like the level four before you crit. The truth is, is that the difference is so small that it, it really does not matter. Like if you end up critting your Ash of the Dawn at iconic two versus after iconic four, it really will not matter much. But generally the advice that I gave you is sound and should be work for all of your marches going in the future um most people actually myself included did not even stick to my own plan or won't be able to stick to the plan that i outlined because you have different blueprints lying around in different places so if you don't have blueprints you can't upgrade so sometimes it's just better to get your you know iconic uh five ash of the dawn because you have a bunch of material saved up and you have a bunch of blueprints and you just can't work on anything else for the meantime like sometimes that's just the case and that's how the game goes so again i hope this served as a general guideline for you guys and uh really it, you know it was fun to make i enjoy theory crafting videos like this and uh it's what i enjoy in in games like rise of kingdoms i mean i spend way too much time min maxing all my commanders and all this stuff um i say that after showing you she was return which i know is terrible and i know that my rally set includes a crit gold helm of the empire instead of the kvk set i know even i have made mistakes guys it's okay it happens to all of us so again i hope you learned something please like and subscribe if you did enjoy the video leave a comment down below i will be hearting every positive comment that I see, as I always do. And again, hope to see you guys around in the next one. Peace.